Hello, calculus fans. Okay, so let's try a problem involving a position, velocity, and acceleration. So our setup is that we've got an outdoor elevator, which is 200 meters above the ground, but it's also rising at the rate of five meters per second. So we've got a kid in the elevator that drops a water balloon from the elevator. So by dropping it means he's not imparting any additional velocity to the water balloon other than the five meters per second that it's already getting. We're going to ignore all air resistance. We want to compute a few things here. We want to know what's the velocity of the water balloon at any given time. We want to know its position at any time. I'd like to know the maximum height of the water balloon and what its velocity when it finally hits the ground. And in everything we do here we're going to use the fact that the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the acceleration is 9.8 and the object is being pulled downward so we can write down an expression for what the acceleration is. So we have a of t is equal to negative 9.8. That negative sign is because the object is being accelerated downward and we're using positive direction as being up. We're given in the problem that the initial position is 200 so initial position tells us that s of 0 is equal to 200. And the initial velocity is 5, so v of 0 is equal to 5. We also know things like the derivative of the position is the velocity, and the double derivative of the position is the acceleration. So in order to go from the acceleration to the position, we're going to compute two antiderivatives. So for the first antiderivative, we start with our acceleration function, compute an antiderivative to get to the velocity function. Notice that we need the most general antiderivative because in our next step we're going to solve for what that c is. Anytime you compute an antiderivative, you need to throw an arbitrary constant in. That's what the plus c is for. Now v of 0 is equal to 5. That's our initial velocity. So we can just plug that in. That means we have a 5 on the left hand side and a 0 for t. That's going to give us what c is. All right, so we have c is equal to 5. We can put that back in here to get our velocity function. So v of t is equal to negative 9.8t plus 5. So that's the velocity function. That tells us how fast is this thing moving at any given time. And it also gives us the direction of the velocity, whether it's up or down. We'll compute one more antiderivative to get the position. Okay, so an antiderivative of v of t is equal to negative 4.9t squared plus 5t plus d. We use the power rule to go from negative 9.8t to negative 4.9t squared. And then we have this plus d because we need to have an arbitrary constant. And so we need the most general antiderivative. We're going to solve for d now. Notice that we're using a different letter for this antiderivative. If we have to compute more than one antiderivative, it's probably a good idea to use different constants so that we don't get confused amongst them. Now we know that s of 0 is equal to 200, so we're going to use that to solve for d. The way we do it is to plug in t is equal to 0, and then on the left-hand side we've got the 200. Well, all of those terms disappear to just give us d equals 200. So if we go back now, we've got s of t is equal to negative 4.9t squared plus 5t plus 200. Basically, we go back and put the 200 in here for d. Okay, so we've answered parts a and b. What is the velocity at any given time? That's here. And what is the position at any time? That's here. We're now going to turn our attention to part c, which asked, what is the maximum height of the water balloon? Now the maximum height, that's when the, the water balloon goes up and then it has to come back down, so the velocity has to be zero at the highest point. So we'll set v of t equals to zero to find out when that happens. 
So essentially, we set 0 equal to negative 9.8t plus 5, and then we can solve for t. So we get t equals 5 over 9.8, which is a little more than a half a second. So what's going on is we're going up in the elevator. The kid releases the water balloon. The balloon is still going up for a little while, but then it starts falling. Okay, so that t equals 0.51 seconds. That's when the maximum height is, but it doesn't tell us what the maximum height is. So we're going to plug this value back into the position function to get what the actual uh, maximum height is. So essentially we're going to calculate the position function at 5 over 9.8. So we go plug it back into the uh, position function and we get this expression, which works out to a little more than 200 meters. Now it should make sense that the answer we're getting here is just a little bit bigger than 200 meters. The water balloon is going up the elevator, and when we hit the height of 200 meters, the kid is releasing the water balloon, so it still goes up for a little while before it starts falling. So I was expecting to get some value that's a little bit more than 200 meters. Okay, now I'd like to find out when the object strikes the ground, what is its velocity? Now in order to accomplish this, in order to find out what the velocity is when it hits the ground, we have to find out when does it hit the ground. So we're going to set the position function equal to zero and s solve for t. And that's a quadratic equation, so we'll just use the quadratic formula. So if we put everything into the quadratic formula, we get this. And then you can work out the two separate solutions. One of them with a plus, one of them with a minus. And we get two different answers, negative 5.9 and 6.9. Now that negative 5.9 doesn't make sense. It doesn't work in the context of the problem. We're starting at time equals zero, so this answer here, we're just going to throw it out. So we're just left with this one solution, about 6.9 seconds. What that represents is how long it takes for the object to fall, to hit the ground. Just under 7 seconds for it to fall all the way up from up there. So what we now need to do is figure out what is the velocity when the object hits the ground. So what we'll do is we'll take this value here and plug it into the velocity function. And that's going to give us how, what is the velocity when the object strikes the ground. Okay, so we're taking this second time, t2, and plugging it into the velocity function. And we get this expression, negative 9.8 times the value of t2. And then we're going to add 5 to that. So go back and look at what the velocity function is. It just says 9.8t plus 5. And then if you use a calculator to work all this out, you'll get about negative 62.8 meters per second. So let's talk about the interpretation of this number. What that's telling us is that it's moving 62.8 meters per second, and the negative sign indicates that it's moving down, it's falling, when the water balloon hits the ground. And let's just hope nobody's underneath that when it hits. Okay, that's all for now.